Hello and welcome back to the Conductors Podcast, starring me, Fabian, Louise, Hi, Ali, Hello, and Harry. Hello. Today, Ali will be telling us about the story of Thomas Brassi. Take it away. Thank you so much, Fabian. Now, Thomas Brassi was born in, on the 7th of November, 1805, in Wharton, Cheshire. He was a businessman, a railway civil engineer, but most importantly, a builder and an inventor. He went to school in Chester at the age of 12, and by the age of 16, he went to become a surveyor with William Lawton who was an acquaintance of his. But over the years, he got the role of manager for the company of Lawton and Brassey after Mr. Lawton died. He became one of the most important railway engineers and inventors in the 19th century, but also important with the invention of steamships, locomotives, sewage systems, and water supplies. Bit of a nasty job, but okay. <laughs> Let's see which one. He died of brain cancer and suffered from it, but at least he died as the wealthiest railway inventor in the world, winning over five million pounds, which by the way, those five million pounds count nowadays as I believe it's two hundred million pounds. Wow. Something like that. That's, as, that's uh, incredible. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it is crazy a crazy money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It went from 5 million to 200 million over those years. You could buy a good bit of lunch with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or you could buy yourself a Lamborghini with that. Mm, indeed. True. Ooh. Although he'd probably rather take the train. <clears throat> Lamborghinis didn't exist then, so he was probably like blows his mind like what actually thomas brassi was like an absolute genius back then so he could have like probably invented something even greater than a lamborghini really should have done it then yeah he should have <laughs> would have made, even, would have made even more money gosh <laughs> yeah maybe maybe 10 million pounds which then would have been four 400 million then gosh yeah so I chose Thomas Brassi uh, because he he's a very interesting character. Not because of, well, I pretty much chose him because he's just an absolute brilliant inventor. And he is pretty much, he was pretty much influenced in the Crimean War, which I will talk about it uh, later on. So, in 1835, he worked mostly abroad and built three quarters of France's railways and some other lines in the Netherlands, Italy, Prussia, and Spain. And because of his extraordinary work and achievements, he got several job offers from Canada, Australia, Argentina, and India. By 1847, he built about one third of the railways in Britain. And by the time of his death, in 1870, it was estimated that Brassy had been involved in some way in one in, all, in every 20 miles of railways in the world with the biggest bridges, longest tunnels, most soaring viaducts and remotest routes, all achieved with his participation and engineering expertise. Uh, he was involved in the Crimean War. So the Crimean War happened between 1853 and 1856, when Russia fought against a big coalition of four powers, the Ottoman Empire, Britain, France, and Sardinia Piedmont. Businessmen and inventors like Thomas Brassi thought it was the perfect opportunity to test their products on the battlefield, while also giving them some sort of patriotic contribution to their struggle. So that's what Thomas Brassi did. It's fascinating and that he 
he took uh, he took such an active role in the Crimean War, especially since the Crimean War was the first major use of the railways in war. And it was it was a massive it part. Yeah. It was a massive part of why Russia lost that war, because Russia couldn't move their troops as effectively as the other nations could, just because they hadn't industrialized so much. So they basically just were at a massive loss because of steam power, essentially, which is incredible. To yeah, think. absolutely, I agree. I I totally agree, and because of you know weather conditions, especially the winter, mm. with all the blizzards and all that. But railways were like no problem with with snow storms and all that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they made a huge difference to transporting. Yeah, you know, and that's why. And things like that, that. Yeah, and that's that's pretty much where railways come into such an important asset for military mm. use. So Brassy, he obviously helped the British armed forces win the Crimean War by building railways there to transport food, medicine, warm clothes, weapons and munitions. And he, he succeeded in building those railways and the British army was well supplied and that's how they won the Crimean War. Was he commissioned to build them or was he part of the army anyway? Do you know? Uh, I would say he was he was rewarded with he was rewarded handsomely, and he was given uh, a, a medal, the British Legion of Honor. That's what the medal is called. Wow! I mean, you could say technically he won the war, essentially. Yeah, you could say uh, he he was pretty much. A part of the victor, really. Mm, mm, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for that, it pretty much earned him lots of respect and support for him and his company. And he even invented locomotives. And he was well acquainted with Robert Stephenson, another brilliant railway inventor. He was actually acquainted with a lot more inventors and businessmen at the time. But Robert Stephenson was one of them that I could find. And from his he was dad, George, as well. Yeah. Stephenson and Robert Stephenson. Yes, yeah, Ste Stephenson. Oh, well. Sorry. Uh, from eighteen forty one to eighteen forty three, he built the Paris Ruin Railway, then returned home to build the Lancaster and Carlisle, Carlisle Railway, the Tilbury and Southend Railway, the Shrewsbury and Hereford Railway, and the Great Northern Railway. And by 1852, he built the Grand Trunk Railway in Canada. And Brassy was awarded with medals like the French Legion d'honneur, the Italian Order of Saint Maurice and Lazarus, the British medal that I've mentioned before, the Legion of Honor, and the Austrian Iron Crown. Yep. For the bloke who's like, because people were quite appreh apprehensive about the railways when they first sort of came along, he's doing quite well for himself. Like, he was. Really like him, you know? Yeah, he was doing very well for himself. In fact, he pretty much famous at that time. Brassi's biggest achievement was the Grand Trunk Railway of Canada because of its 539 miles in length that could travel between Quebec and Toronto. So it was by far the largest railway line Canada could have. Uh, but me personally, I would say the Crimean War had to be the biggest achievement since this helped boost his reputation and proved railways to be useful for military purposes. And not to mention that this got him to earn more fortune from a nation's government. Uh, there was something that I caught my attention from the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography, which stated that Brassie's biggest 
greatest achievement was, and I quote, to raise the status of the civil engineering contractor to the eminence already attained in the mid 19th century by the engineer. Why, why, why did he choose to do railways? Like out of all the business he could have done, why railways? Well, from my perspective, I'd say that he shows us that with railways you can pretty much do anything. You can transport people, you can transport goods, you can transport livestock. You can pretty much do a lot of things with relative ease that not even like a normal carriage with two wheels and a horse could do. Like it was revolutionary at the time because it was just so fast in comparison to any other transport that they had. Exactly, yeah. Also because like nowadays when any businesses are started, there's and why they've become so successful is because of he definitely saw a gap in the market and he could just make a fortune off of it. And it's crazy how you can link something from the 1800s to nowadays in terms of business. Yeah, not to mention that railways were like practically new at that time. So yeah, it did earn him a lot of money. Wow, that was uh, incredible. Absolutely amazing story. This has been the Conductors Podcast. Thank you ever so much for listening and we will see you next time.